I uh, just want to start out and say, uh, first of all, great first and foremost to see all you guys uh, with the chance to be out here um, when we're initially kind of kicking things off uh, with our rookies, with our uh, obviously draft picks, our our uh, CFA free agents we signed, and then a lot of great tryout guys we have out here. Um, give the players a ton of credit for coming in in a real short amount of time, you know, digesting some some real information, real parts of our systems that we'll run in all three phases, and uh, you know, making it. I, I challenge them. Let's try to make it look like football on day one, and and, and I think they were able to do that. Uh, for the most part, so really excited about that. I thought our coaches did a great job day one. Now we got to roll into, uh, you know, the real challenge is to, to figure out a way in a short amount of time to not only correct the mistakes from today, but uh, make sure we're even better um, tomorrow. But with that said, uh, I'll take some questions from you guys. day one. I know you've been meeting with the guys and everything. It's hard to translate it in the first day. Obviously. Yeah, I think uh, so much of it is um, what little things can we take away from today uh, to make sure as coaches, you know, we're giving these guys clarity, even though uh, you're trying to throw a lot at them. You're trying to make sure you're trying to really see, um, you know, even if a guy's here to try out to be a part of our football team, um, can they take the information from the meeting room and can they apply it to, to how they play football out here? And even when uh, they might not be as comfortable as some of our veterans who, uh, it, you know, in a lot of cases when we hit the grass on Monday, we'll have been doing this for five weeks, hearing a lot of the same things. Uh, you know, some of the great tryout or rookie stories that, that I've been around in this league are guys that flashed from the very first uh, practice and maybe they didn't even know what they were doing at all and their physical ability can overcome some of that stuff. So we'll go watch the tape with these guys and, and just like I said, try to stack a day and get better tomorrow. Yeah, I think uh, for me, um, you know, we're trying to, we tried to keep the numbers a little bit lower than to try to have, you know, the, the traditional 70, 80 guys when you'd have some team drills and the ball's on the ground a bunch, players are on the ground a bunch. So what we're doing is those competitive seven on sevens are really kind of turning it into a pseudo passing camp. Uh, just to make sure we can get quality reps, we can install some things, and then and then try to really evaluate guys on both sides of the ball when the ball's in the air. Um, but those big guys, we'll try to incorporate something tomorrow within the rules um, where we can get uh, those guys at least lining up from uh, across from one another. Um, but really, what we're trying to do is just acclimate these guys overall from you know where to go in the meetings, or where to go in the building, where to eat lunch. So. When they get rolled in, that's the one good thing about having them in this week. They stay here through the weekend. Uh, we'll take them to the uh, the Twins game tomorrow night, get them acclimated with, with the, the local sports scene here, and then they'll be ready to roll Monday morning to be uh, right back in with these veterans because, you know, we're steamrolling forward ahead. So. Did you end up putting rookie camp a week later for that reason? That's exactly so right. Yeah, you're, that's, that's exactly right. I just, I'm not a fan of doing it last weekend and then you got to send them home and then bring them back. It's a lot of travel. Uh, these guys have traveled enough, in my opinion, with the visits and the combine and different pro days and all the things that they go through. Uh, get them here, uh, allow them to stay through the weekend, you know, be where their feet are planted and, and, and hit the ground running on Monday because the expectation is uh, not that although they get extra time, extra meetings, the expectation is, you know, if we're counting on you and we're counting on you to compete, uh, you know, let's go. Let's roll. Bring in a veteran like Brett Hundley, and kind of how does that benefit you having somebody who's, who's played some football before? In the yeah, it definitely league? benefits. And you know, I thought Pat did a nice job today too, uh, just from a standpoint of the quarterback position on weekends like this. A lot of times, from just being able to call the play in the huddle, uh, to go execute cadence, and then obviously make good decisions to put the ball in play and throw completions. I mean, in my opinion, that position can kind of run the weekend and, and be. Uh, either a big reason why it has a lot of success or be you know, one of the sole reasons why it doesn't. So those guys deserve a lot of credit, both uh, Brett and Pat today. But um, as far as Brett goes, I've, you know, I spent a lot of time on him coming out of the draft. I've always been uh, you know, intrigued by him as a quarterback in this league, and, and he's kind of bounced around, been in some spots, uh, been coached up well, you can tell, in the meeting room. Um, I thought Chris did a great job. O'Hara did a great job getting those guys ready to go today. Um, but ultimately, we're just trying to see if we can make our team better in any way, shape, or form, any of the positions out here. That's why the tryout guys are here. They're here for a reason. That's what I told them. Compete, and we'll see, we'll see how everything shakes out. How aggressive were you guys? Describe what the rep room was like going after the undrafted guys and the money yeah. you guys spent. Yeah, I think it's one of those uh, 
you know, it's, it's one of those things where no matter what building you're in, no matter what your process is, uh, it's always a mad dash. And, and, and I give our coaches a lot of credit for getting uh, a lot of the guys under contract that we did because they're competing. I mean, uh, in a lot of ways nowadays with the rules, the way they're set up, uh, some of these guys are, you know, getting calls from 10, 12, 15 teams in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, and they've got to try to decide. So you really try to build some relationships ahead of time where you can, and then ultimately, you know, try to sell them on the vision, uh, much like we have, our, you know, a lot of our players. Hey, this is what you're walking into. This is the culture we're trying to build here, and we really feel good about the early stages of what we've been able to build so far, uh, we will, but we want you to be a part of it. And, and when you mean it and it's authentic and real, and then they can show up on a weekend like this and feel that same thing and back it up even more. Uh, you know, I think we got a good thing going, but it's a huge part of the process. Give our personnel side, Quasey and his group, uh, Rob Brzezinski, uh, you know, obviously played a role in that part. And then our coaches helping get those things done. You could just talk about your thoughts on the schedule coming out yeah. yesterday and specifically no bye week after the London game. How did that kind of come about? Because yeah. it usually was. Best yeah, the, the, the second part of that first, the no bye week, I, I just, you know, I know internally here we had a lot of discussions about whether we would request that or not from the league. Um, and just nowadays, knowing uh, where we want to go with this football team to think about a week five bye, uh, although it might help in the short term uh, coming off of a trip like that. Um, playing 13 games in a row before possibly playing some bonus games on top of that, uh, that can be taxing. Uh, that can be really taxing on these guys. Uh, so what we wanted to try to do was get the bye a little bit later, not a ton later. The league, I think the league did you know, a great job putting together all the schedules, but we were really, really happy with ours. Getting that week seven bye, kind of coming off that uh, you know, trip, we'll do a great job uh, with our sports performance group and, 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 and listening to kind of the science on how we'll make our guys feel great for that game, but then obviously uh, making sure uh, the, the, our players feel great for that following week home game, which was the big part of that. And then shoot, we've got some great opportunities, obviously opening up at home uh, against the Green Bay Packers. That's the one I see on the schedule right now because it's the first week, but obviously a great opportunity for our fans to come out to U.S. Bank Stadium, uh, make sure that thing's full of purple. Uh, and I can only wait to hear how loud that'll be when we come running out of the tunnel. Uh, you know, I can... Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that was important. That was a real important part of not having that buy right after. So we were very thankful for, to the league for that. Just, um, what have you learned over your time coaching about how much information to give them like right away versus maybe staggering that in? Yeah, we uh, will try to, at least the plan of attack right now is to stagger uh, basically two installs. So they, they came in, they got about, you know, a small amount of plays. They, you know, we, that's really the good thing about making it a passing camp is you can really focus on one phase and really evaluate that. Um, so tomorrow we'll give them not a whole new set of plays and concepts, but we'll give them more and more formations, maybe some new motions. Uh, and Ed will add in some defensive calls and, and just kind of different techniques that they could then tailor their individual to, uh, tailor the kind of group periods to, and ultimately, hopefully, will lead into them feeling just a little bit more comfortable on Monday, which will be a crazy day as they get rolled right in with the veterans. With a player like um, Louis Seen, uh, Louis Seen, who's going to start right away or you want to start right away. Is this different for him at all? Like how important, I guess, is this for him to even be here before OTAs and things like that? Yeah, I think it's huge. I think, you know, uh, you know, him getting a chance to pseudo, like I told him today, hey, lead this group out here. There's a reason why, you know, you are our first round draft pick and, and uh, you know, he's got that makeup and it, it comes naturally to him uh, to lead by example. But I, you know, I challenged him, you know, take the rest of that DB group under your wing. You've got Andrew with you, you know, you got a Caleb, you got some guys there that we're going to count on to compete. So uh, let's obviously have fun. I thought the one thing that those guys did and, and when you're starting to compete and try to, in a lot of ways, try to earn your spot on a roster, they still practice like pros. You know, sometimes, like I said, you can come out here and guys are on the ground and, you know, there's collisions and you're just kind of holding on uh, for dear life that you don't lose anybody. I thought for the most part, uh, it felt like a pro practice, even though these guys are really doing it for the first time. So once again, a, t a lot of credit to those guys, but it's big for Lou because, you know, Monday we're going to roll him right in there and, and we're not going to hold back. We got to, you know, use this off season. We basically had our entire team here, the entire off season program, which has been huge for us as an organization and, and really building what we're doing early on. Uh, but now these guys are a part of it and they'll be a part of competing and, and it'll still be a big time growth uh, you know, process for them to learn, uh, but also throw their hat in there and, and, and try to show their teammates what they can do.
describe kind of playing catch up just because of the timeline for when you were hired? Do you, yeah. think, do you think you finally caught up or is there still more? And then I guess, how does that help uh, get this group of players caught up to be ready to roll more on Monday? Yeah, I think we're, I think we're caught up. I really do. I think, uh, you know, the way we've been able to kind of use phase one and phase two uh, to really teach and then aggressively teach the techniques and fundamentals, you know, split, you know, O and D work out at separate times on the field, but they're working out together in the weight room a ton. Uh, we've really, uh, our guys have embraced, we've done something new from a strength and conditioning standpoint. So we do a, a big and skill lift. We don't do O and D. We're, we don't have our team separate uh, the entire time. Like, uh, you know, it's easy to do scheduling wise, just say, hey, offense, defense. Uh, but Monday and Tuesday, they'll be, you know, the bigs, the O line and D line will be lifting together. And then the receivers, DBs, quarterbacks, safeties, linebackers, they'll be uh, obviously lifting together. And what that does, you know, from my experience being around it, it's really, really good when, you know, Harrison Smith can be pushing Justin Jefferson in the weight room or vice versa. Uh, it's really, really good, you know, when uh, Brian O'Neill can be pushing one of our guys up front, whoever that may be. And I just think it does a lot for your team this time of year to do that. So that's a way you catch up as far as building what you want to do. And then us as a coaching staff and, and, and with Quasi's group, I, it's just the constant dialogue of understanding where are we, where do we need to be, by the end of this offseason program, and then more importantly, where do we want to be day one of training camp as we build towards, you know, that week one opponent? We have an we'll the kind of look, you know, it's his first practice since we've seen all of that. Yeah, yeah, and, and we've everybody. seen him, you know, we've seen him on the grass here with the the rest of our guys through the last three weeks. So I thought it was a good example of, you know, a guy like that being able to put on that Vikings helmet and run out here and be a part of a little bit more of a practice structure than that phase two structure, but pretty similar for him. I thought he did a great job. He's been one of those guys. You love the look in his eye so far through the first week, uh, you know, phase one and two, and, and he'll be a guy we're watching closely as we get into phase three and, and his, uh, you know, continued ascent throughout this offseason program. Eased in. It looked like Booth was doing yeah. some stuff off to, to the side, but not a lot of the work yep. during normal drills. Yep, you called it. He's close. He's really close. We just wanted to make sure we get him here, you know, get Tyler and Uriah, get their eyes on him, see exactly where he's at, and then uh, ultimately get him going uh, little by little. But he's a guy we're counting on, so we want to make sure that when it, when the time is right, you know, he's he physically feels great, but that doesn't mean we can't stress him above the neck right now uh, to kind of see where he's at. But I was uh, – you know, that gives me a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for me to kind of cruise around both sides of the ball, offense and defense. He was one of those guys, you know, competitive banter with, uh, knowing that he's not out there. And uh, whenever we threw a completion on those guys, he heard about it from me. I guess something that, what do you like about Lewis that he's shown you? Obviously, today is not, you know, it's day one, but now that you've been there and you have him in person, what's impressed you the most? Yeah, I think it's just he's got, uh, you know, he's got a calm demeanor to him. He's got that kind of off the field. Uh, where you're, you're not quite wondering, you're, you're, you're like, hey, is this the same guy I watched on tape? But then uh, even though he's just in a helmet, he's not in shoulder pads, he's not in full pads, it's not full contact out there. You watch him step over the, the white lines and, and uh, the Lewis scene from tape, the tape comes out. And really how I saw it was the ownership of the information, the calls back there. Those safeties drive the ship uh, in a lot of ways for you know, where we're rotating down, you know, what kind of, whether we're playing shell coverage or single high coverage, a lot of it from the same look. Uh, so any rep he can get out there with teammates communicating, it's a huge thing for him. What's it like for, for the for first time, you know, going back and forth yeah. for you, because it's ordinarily, it's probably all quarterbacks with the Rams yep. and, and offense. What's that like to be, uh, you know, going to defense and like how much time you decide to spend there? It, you know, just as far as the acclimation process, personally. Yeah, it'd be really easy for me to stand over there with the quarterbacks or even the offense for the, the whole practice. But that's why you feel so good about uh, the coaches you hire because they're completely on top of everything. Uh, it is it is awkward when that individual period starts and you're kind of just cruising around and you're so used to for a long time now having you know an exact place to go, an exact drill to go run, and now you're just kind of in observation mode, which I guess is a good thing. But it lets me spend a ton of time on the other side you know, I know, uh, I know what those offensive individual drills look like, so I can get over there and, you know, watch Ed and, and watch Durante and those guys with the DBs, Manus with the linebackers, obviously Rumpf and, and uh, Mike Smith with the big guys up front. It allows me to kind of see our team kind of organically coming together in a way uh, that, quite frankly, I haven't been able to do as a coordinator or position coach. So it's a great question, and it's something I'll get more comfortable with uh, as the time goes on, I promise you that. Last two questions. What team building will you be able to accomplish at the game that you might not be able to if you weren't in that environment? 
Yeah, I think uh, it's just a matter of they'd be the, at that point, they'd be either sitting in the hotel um, or, you know, maybe we could get them together for a meal, but why not get them out? Uh, get them out in the community here from the very jump. It's going to be a big part of what we do. We've got things planned with our whole team over the next three or four or five weeks here, the off-season program, just because we've got guys who are, you know, so willing to, to be out in the community and make an impact. Uh, why not help organize some of that early on and then let them kind of take it from there? Um, but the, as far as the team building goes, you know, that's, it's, you know, it's completely something that, that we want to never take for granted. Uh, we got great guys. We got a team, a locker room that is so dialed in and connected right now, even though it's early on. Uh, anytime we can kind of build uh, within the schedule, within the rules, build something where these guys can go uh, bond and spend some time together in that uh, different setting, maybe have a couple coaches there. Um, it's good for our team. It's good for these young guys for sure. What'd you say? Sweet or stands for the for the Twins game? Uh, I think uh, I think it'll be a little bit of both. I, I don't know uh, when you're when you're going with the kind of group we're going with. Uh, you give them the choice, um, but ultimately uh, we got to have both options because of the, the the amount of people we're going to bring with us. But it'll be a good time, and uh, we'll see how that first pitch goes. Uh, nope. little, Thanks, everybody. Little we'll hint right there. Appreciate you guys. No. no.